everybody, it's Lisa here. So today's video is about the eight most common traps we fall into in recovery. I fell into most of these traps when I was in recovery and it's also commonly what I see in my clients. So I really feel it's important to talk about it. It's so normal that these things happen. Like nobody's recovery is perfect and recovery is not a straight line. But I hope me just making this video is helping you to realize maybe if you feel stuck in recovery and why it could be. So I really hope you're gonna find today's video helpful. And if you wanna know more about recovery, then please also check out my book and also on my website I have a few courses about recovery and how to go through it step by step and please like this video if you find it helpful and also subscribe to my channel to be up to date whenever I post new videos and now let's start with today's video so the first trap I want to talk about is the tiptoeing through recovery and what I mean here is that we take recovery too slow and too gradually and we are holding ourselves back a lot and what I mean here as very often because of the like fears we have and all the uncomfortable things we have to go through in recovery we take recovery too slow and too gradually we don't want to get uncomfortable we want to avoid big challenges we hold back a lot when it comes to taking action and it's all very understandable because we don't want to face all the fear that comes up, the anxiety, the guilt and shame. All of those feelings can come up when you challenge yourself in a more big and bold way. But the reality is that if you are tiptoeing through recovery and you're not making those like bigger and bolder steps, then you really risk recovery burnout. Because doing all those like little challenges like here and there, of course it's better than nothing but it's still scary it's still uncomfortable and if you start with the little challenges and you're gonna take things very slow then it only means that in time the challenges are gonna get bigger and scarier so if even doing those little challenges is challenging and scary then it's gonna get worse over time this way of doing recovery is exhausting and i call it doing the recovery in a slow torture way because it truly feels like a slow torture that will never end but if you're gonna do bigger challenges from the start you are going all in then over time the challenges can start to get easier they start to feel less scary less uncomfortable in time and i also recommend you to see my video about the recovery burnout where i talk more about this and next is the caloric minimum strap and maybe you have heard me talking about the recovery minimums uh, that say to eat uh, 2500 calories to 3500 calories per day but here so many people take those as maximums not minimums in reality those calorie guidelines are just minimums they are a starting point they are not a limit they are not the maximum and the minimums mean that you can and should go over them especially because so many people have extreme hunger so many people have mental hunger to eat way more than that for full recovery you have to eat to your full physical and mental hunger there is no way around it for many people eating only the caloric minimums would be restrictive they would be just on another diet and also i recommend you to see my videos about the caloric maximums next trap is the half assing trap this means that we only do one part of recovery but totally ignore other parts of recovery for example let's say you are doing a lot of challenging your fear foods you are eating them regularly you are facing your fear foods constantly but at the same time you are still not eating enough calories you are not still eating to your full hunger full physical and mental hunger food challenges are not going to recover you if you also don't eat enough calories or let's say maybe you are facing your fear foods you are eating enough calories but you keep on exercising and exercising is a very common way of compensation because maybe yeah you're eating more calories but then you're also burning those calories to something like exercise that right now you simply don't have any excess energy for rest is another important component of recovery next is the neglect trap it's a bit similar to the last one but here you are ignoring and neglecting 
other important aspects of recovery and a big aspect of recovery is mental recovery working on body image working on thoughts working on limiting beliefs your self-talk self-care and so on there is more to recovery than just the eating part and i have a whole playlist of videos about mental recovery so you can check those out as well so the next trap is the react and act trap and what I mean here is that whenever you feel triggered, you have any negative thoughts or uncomfortable feelings, then you automatically react to it and act on it. This can mean that you haven't developed some important skills in recovery, such as practicing awareness of your thoughts or being able to sit with your uncomfortable feelings. Because if you keep on reacting to any negative thoughts with more negative thoughts, more self-judgment and criticism, then you're not going to make a lot of progress. This is where practicing awareness and mindfulness are very important. So in those moments, you're able to pause and then choose a different and more helpful focus. And also, if you keep acting on any uncomfortable sensations, feelings or urges with the same old disordered behaviors, then you will never recover. What you need here is to practice Sitting with those uncomfortable emotions increase your tolerance to be able to sit with the discomfort because in recovery, yeah, like there is a lot of it. And then you are able to choose a more helpful pro-recovery action instead. And here, another helpful video I recommend you to see is how to deal with your emotions in recovery. Next is the hunger and fullness trap. And here you maybe overthink your hunger. You try to not binge at all costs. It can become the don't binge it diet. And this is a very common trap people get into in recovery, especially with people who try to practice this like intuitive eating. They make intuitive eating mostly about practicing eating by this like hunger scale. They get so obsessed with eating only when they're like physically hungry and totally neglecting things like mental hunger. And they're very careful to stop when they reach fullness, making sure that at any cost they don't overeat or feel overly full. But at the same time, they are not satisfied. And this becomes another form of restriction, the hunger and fullness diet, where you obsess about eating perfectly and you make intuitive eating all about following the hunger scale. But recovery eating is not same as normal eating. And I have an entire video about this, so you can check that out. Next is the healthy and fit trap. This is very commonly where many people get trapped even after their full recovery. When before in their disorder, they were obsessed with eating very little and losing weight. Then now they become obsessed with eating very healthy and becoming fit. So it can still be like another manifestation of being obsessed with the food you eat and how your body looks. I want to say that eating nutritious foods by itself is not a problem. But if somebody is scared to eat other types of foods, if they lay label it as bad or unhealthy, then it becomes a problem. Also, exercising and moving your body the way you enjoy is not a problem. But again, it becomes a problem if it's another way to control our body and our weight. Because exercising is the socially accepted form of compensation. And it is unhealthy when we have an unhealthy mindset with it. So here, you just have to be very honest with yourself. Like, what is your mindset behind your eating and also with exercise? And the last one is the distraction from action trap. And this is a very common trap. What this means is that often we seek the endless reassurance in a form of watching all the videos, listening all the podcasts, reading all the books. We get trapped in doing this like endless research and trying to get it right before we start to take consistent recovery action. The endless research and reassurance seeking can be a way of distracting yourself from taking pro-recovery action. Recovery won't be perfect and you will learn a lot but you will learn even more if you start to take action and you learn as you go through it because no amount of watching listening reading is gonna get you any results if you also don't take consistent recovery action so this is it for today's video i really hope you found all of those things very helpful and if you want to know more about recovery check out my book and also check out the online courses i have on my website and please like this video video if you find it helpful and also subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye!